Chiatas is a barangay of Quezon City. So Quezon City is one of the big cities that's part of the larger Metro Manila area. Back in the 90s, there was a lot of pictures and videos of this place called Smoky Mountain, of just these massive mounds of trash with billowing smokes and lots of fires and things like that. The picture today is a little bit different. It's a little bit more progressive, but it's still kind of in very, very poor conditions. So we're here today to kind of talk to different people and see what their livelihood is like. Right now we're in one of those sorting facilities where people actually just go through trash and try to find junk, things that they can salvage, things that they can actually maybe eat and recook or something. Yung mga basura from restaurants, from malls, dito muna dinadala, tapos yung segregate. And then yung mga trash na talaga, tsaka nila dadalhin doon. Do they also salvage for food here? Is it mostly... Yung tinatawag nilang pagpag, if you are familiar. So that's ano, food yun from the restaurant. So mga tira-tira, tapos pinapagpag lang nila, tinatanggal yun. And then they see if it's still then, viable yun, or not. Yes. Yeah. Yung mga dinatabo naman dito dito, hindi naman po, ano, hindi naman po lahat na, ano yun, uh, Marumi. Siguro sa mga mayayaman, eh, yun yung mga tinatawag yung mga excess na lang nila yung mga tira. Pag mga siyempre malinis pa, pwede pang kaya din ng tao. Pero hindi rin po namin pinapakain sa mga bata. Kami po kumakain yung mga matanda na. Kasi baka masira yung dyan ng bata, magkasakit. Pero hindi pa naman siya expire. Nilikman ko rin, pero tinapin ko din. Nilagay ko rin agad sa kaling baboy. But it's just so pretty crazy to think that they would dish something out of the garbage and actually cook it. You kind of wonder what that recycling is for, or what, what all that's for when at the end of the day it comes to landfills and dump sites like this where everything's just basically mixed. And as you can tell, the floor, there's no like tarp or anything. So everything that's coming out of the trash has to go somewhere. All these little things are problematic because yes, there's a sanitary landfill right behind us, but how come in sorting facilities like this, you don't have something that is properly done? Sabi kasi dati tambakan din daw to. Yung bago kami mag-umpisa, pinalinis muna namin. Then yung nung nalinis na to, isa-isa nang umupahan na kami. Sabi nga nila, within 5 years or 10 years, papasok ang mga investor. Kaya kailangan ito maganitong waste, malayo na, mabandang mantalban na. Paano papasok ang investor kung sa bungad pa lang ng litex o ng main road, makikita mo na yung mga basura. What happens to the people that live here, the people that depend on the sorting of the garbage, they're probably going to end up having to follow that trail just to be able to have another source of livelihood. Now we just have to make sure that people do it properly all the time, that things are always very secured and the same time that we try to keep kids off the street and kind of away from this because it, it can be quite dangerous for all of them. Walking around areas like this that have been rehabilitated and cleaned up, you sometimes forget about what happens in between the cracks and behind the freshly whitewashed concrete walls built to give a simile sense of comfort to the few who might wander by but don't stay for too long. We met three families that day, all with stories that seemed too real to be true, putting in question my belief in what we all consider normal. Ate Josie Barrios is the breadwinner of her family. She has three children. The first child is her son with her previous partner. Now she has two girls with her supposed to be present partner, but unfortunately he left them a few months ago, leaving them in a small room with a disapproving mother-in-law. Ate Josie earns through scavenging in the nearby dump site of Payatas. Every day she wakes up as early as three in the morning to start sorting through the trash. She earns a little more than 100 pesos a day. Nagtiri ka namin ng lupa dito po, may bayad po mag Katulad ngayon, wala ko pang bayad sa mga asasyon namin. Yung mga anak ko, dito kasi nag-aaral, ma'am. Kasi sa probinsya, ma'am, malayo kasi, ma'am. Wala akong pagkaano sa kanila doon. Wala akong matapos mag-aaral, baka mga anak ko matatapos mag-aaral, ma'am. Kasi sa probinsya, ma'am, mahirap doon, ma'am. Baka ano ka man ang isang daan. Wala din po. Dito lang ako sa ano, makaano ka na ng isang daan, maghahapon po ito lang. Pangarap po sa mga anak ko, makatapos sila mag-aaral po. Hindi e katulad sa akin nga, wala akong pinag-aaralan. Kumuha kami ng ano, birth certificate sa mga anak ko. Yung anak ko nag ano, sumulat eh, hindi ako marunong gano'n. Kuya Nestor Niñana is the breadwinner of his family. He earns about 100 to 300 pesos daily by selling ice cream sticks depending on the season. Something that is still quite difficult since he had a truck accident a couple months back. Evelyn is helping Kuya Nestor sustain their family needs by making doormats, where she earns about 100 pesos weekly. They are renting this very small room for 500 pesos monthly with no electricity, built over an old pigsty. Two of their children suffer from severe malnourishment. 
yung asawa ko po kasi nag ano siya ng ice cream vendors durmat ako para makatulong din sa pagkain namin kahit na may kapansanan na sa ako ko eh magana pa rin siya na may makakain namin kaya nagdudurmat na lang ako maghapon para makabili kami pagkain minsan po gulay nagbili kami ng gulay minsan po wala pinasamin mga anak ko kumakain kahit asin lang kahit ako eh and finally, the last one we saw was the Romero family. So that was Nanai Marilyn, baby Romero. She's the breadwinner of their family as well. She earns about 300 to 400 pesos. As a laundry woman, her living partner is suffering from glaucoma. So he has problems seeing from his eyes. The little girl, Esther, four years old, she has hydronencephaly. I don't know if that's correct, but it makes her head very big and her body is basically wasn't able to move and got really thin. Isa lang ako naglalabada, yung asawa ko, hindi nakakakita. no nakakita pa ako, gandang sana namin, araw-araw ako pumapasok, na kuha ng mata ko, na kapos-kapos na. So, buti nga, nagpapasalamat din ako sa ano, sa feeding, dahil nasusuportahan nila yung ano ng bata sa amin minsan. Tapos, ito, nabubuhay lang kami sa biyaya ng Panginoon. Taba ito dati, ma'am, pumaya, man, lumiit yung ano niya, kasi nga daw hindi na-exercise. From someone like me who will complain about what superfood I'm going to eat today or what not, to a woman telling me that sometimes they just eat salt uh, just to get enough nutrients in your body. I think what we saw today were extremely courageous women, seven, ten times, twenty times more courageous than I would ever be. For me, the craziest part is the kids because they didn't choose any of this. Put in these situations that are so dire, and so complicated, and so difficult. It really opens your mind. We're not doing this video because we are trying to show only the negative sides of the Philippines. It's nothing like that. It's just because we're trying to shine the light on something that's very real, a problem that is here today that is not being addressed fully that people tend to forget of really easily and not do much of it. So working with foundations like the Payata Soriani Foundation and companies like Kiehl's that really try to, you know, put this issue to light and actually try to do something. There, there are t thousands of NGOs and thousands of foundations out there. So just give and donate as much as you can or if you want to really see the true picture of things and be inspired to maybe change things and come to these places and, and talk to the people and see how inspiring they can truly be because Whatever problems you have right now, whatever problems I have right now, they're absolutely nothing compared to what we saw today.